What's up guys, Frey here on the river. As you can see, about to go for some steelhead. It is gonna be a great day. So I'm gonna to take today and try to make a little bit of an informative video for you guys. I've had all sorts of questions about float fishing. I'm gonna be float fishing to start off today. So I figured I'd take some time to make a video to explain my rig, some tips, techniques, some stuff like that. And of course, it's gonna be lots of good bobber downs as well. Just like this one right here. Give it a second. It's gonna be first drift, I know it. Yep. First drift, baby, let's go. First freaking drift. Man, that was my first take too. I know you guys will not believe it. That was my first take for the intro. Nice chromer hooked up here. Let's see if we can get it in. Oh God, oh God, she's not done. I don't know what she's doing, she's not giving up. Nice one there. And, um, oh, I guess though it came out, but I was gonna show you guys, she was on a pink bead in a bag, which I'll show you guys in a minute. I'm gonna release this fish and then I'm gonna show you guys all. I'm gonna release this fish and then I'm gonna show you guys all about how I rig my floats for these things. I'm no expert, but as you can see, first drift right there. These tips do work. I'm just gonna share with you guys what I've learned over the past four or five years or so of learning to steelhead fish. All right, guys, I love these fish. This is a gorgeous, thick hen. Real nice fish for this area. I'm gonna let her go. Awesome. All right, so the first thing I'll talk about is rods. As you can see, I'm fishing with a center pin rod. You can do the same exact thing I'm doing with a spinning rod or even a bait caster if it's long enough. This is a 12.9 Raven Helix. I think 12.9 is a good length for medium to large sized rivers like this. If you're fishing smaller creeks, you might want to go smaller. Bigger rivers, some people use even longer, but I think a 12 foot or so light action rod is ideal for float fishing in any of these Great Lakes tributaries for steelhead. And I'm going to show you guys in a second here the reason for the extra length on these rods, the reason they're 11, 12, 13 foot long. And it's really just to keep your line off the water and help control your drift. When you're fishing rivers like this, medium to large sized rivers, there's different currents. There's a slower current here, a faster current there. And when your line crosses those currents on the drift, it'll create drag, make it unnatural. But you can just use the length of this rod here to just hold your line off the water completely, have a more direct connection to your bobber. And I'm gonna show you guys how I do that right now. There's kind of two different currents right here, actually, a faster one and a slower one. All right, I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this, but what we've got is we've got slow water here and then a little bit of a faster seam. And then on the other side of it, another slower seam. So I'm gonna use the length of this rod to hit that slower seam, keep my line off the water so there's no drag, get a perfect drift, and hopefully hook up. Right now I'm sitting on the other side of that fast water. I'm still able to keep my drift. hitting that seam I was just talking about. We've got an absolutely crazy fish on here. This is a problem guys, she's way down free. I've got a chaser. I've got no choice but to chase her folks. I know what I'm doing, guys. 
All right, guys, I'm going to focus on landing this fish now. I will see you guys in a second. All right, guys, a little bit overhyped, but she fought me like crazy. She is a really nice fish. Absolute snake of a hen here. She looks to be spawned out, as you can see, on that pink bead and bag. I'll talk more about the rigging and the beads in a minute. This girl gave me an insane fight. She ran me all over the river. All right, so I'm going to talk about reels for float fishing for a minute. And um, as you can see, I'm using a center pin here. You don't need a center pin. I actually have a spinning reel that I also use for float fishing. And each one has a time and a place. Spinning reels work just fine too. But I'm going to try and explain here why, in my opinion, the center pin is the best reel for float fishing by far. They're just made for it. I've got a nice long run here, as you can see. And I can use the center pin to effortlessly cover this entire run. Casting takes a little practice, but um, I'm not going to try to teach you guys how to cast because I'm not an expert. I'm hooked up. I'm hooked up. That was an accident. That was actually an accident. What is it doing? I was going to try and explain how you can just let your drift run all the way down, but um, I'm going to land this fish real quick and then demonstrate that. The little guy, he's dogging me. Fun little distraction here. 10 millimeter orange bead orange and chartreuse again like I said I'm gonna talk about the rigging I promise but I want to get this little real part out of the way first little skipper he's gone he'll be fine didn't mean to toss him like that would not recommend it but he'll be fine he's a skipper That was a fail. Didn't really demonstrate anything, but we're hooked up. Skipper. Pink bag and bead. All right, guys, as far as rigging goes, I am no expert, but I'm gonna show you guys the double bead rig that I was using today, and it worked pretty good. So yeah, I'm just gonna show you how I rigged that up and then some other stuff that you can use, then wrap up this video. So I think I already talked about floats, but I got a fast deep 11 gram here. I like to use heavier floats because it's easier to mend your line. It's just easier to get a good drift with a heavy float. As far as shot patterns go, nothing fancy. I just evenly space out enough shot to balance the float. Like I said, I'm no expert, but this has always worked fine for me. Then a micro swivel. Got 10 pound main line here. And then I start with eight pound fluoro for my leader. Just about two foot right now because the water is nice and murky. They're not going to see it at all. And um, yeah, eight pound fluoro down to the first bead here. I'm using a 10 millimeter, very bright bead right now. Of course, you can use any color. Anyways, the size six hook with uh, some six pound fluoro tied to the bend. That goes down to my second bead. Which today was pink. I think all but one fish today came on that pink bead and then tied to a size 8 hook. That's it. It's a very simple rig. You can tip one of the beads with a spawn bag if you like. Works good for me. Another thing to fish under a float is jigs. Steelhead loves simple marabou jigs. Also these right here, I believe these are called jammin' jigs. These work great with some wax worms on them. Just some other things that you can throw under a float. I might actually fish some of these later. If I do, I will include the footage for sure, but no guarantees. Anyways, that's how I rig up, nice and simple. I'm no expert, so I'm not gonna go into any more detail than that, but I hope that helps. Anyways, that's how I rig. I'm no expert, so I'm not gonna go into any more detail, but I hope that helps. And if this is the end of the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it helped you out a little bit. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.